All right, this is OpenStax U.S. History, Chapter 27, Section 4, The Pacific Theater and the Atomic Bomb. So by 1945, at least in April 1945, uh, Germany surrendered. And at that point, in terms of the Axis powers, it was only Japan that was left. And so the Pacific Theater refers to the fighting that took place between the U.S. and Japan surrounding the Pacific Ocean, right? For the United States, this was a two-front war being fought in Europe, being fought in the Pacific. The United States opted for a Europe-first strategy to save its allies. Once Germany surrendered, then all focus and all effort by the U.S. military could be focused on Japan, and that's exactly what happened. In the Pacific, the Japanese were successful after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. Remember, this was a, a surprise attack on the U.S. Navy, which more or less disabled uh, the Pacific fleet, which could respond to that threat out there. Um, and after that, the Japanese took the opportunity when the United States was weak and without a navy before it was beginning the process to rebuild to expand even further, which included an invasion of the Philippines, which was, remember, a U.S. territory. Uh, and because the you know because of Pearl Harbor, most Americans believe that Japan was you know, kind of the primary enemy for having attacked the United States unprovoked and first. And you could see in some of the propaganda how Japanese were, um, were depicted and demonized by the United States propaganda. Uh, something like maybe like 90% of Americans would consider Japan to be kind of the primary enemy here uh, rather than Germany. Uh, however, though, Japan used the attack on Pearl Harbor to further expand its colonial and imperial ambitions, including taking over the Philippines. The Bataan Death March was a forced march or migration of U.S. and Philippine POWs. And of course, it, it got the name Bataan Death March because so many American soldiers uh, and Philippine soldiers who were allied to the U.S. had died. This was, for many Americans, evidence of Japanese brutality. Couple that with the use of kamikaze attacks. These are suicide attacks, mostly by airplanes. So sometimes the Japanese pilots, if they had ran or exhausted themselves of the ammunition or bombs that they had used in their airplanes, would sometimes just crash their airplanes into the military targets. This was especially true during the later years of the war when the Japanese were much more desperate, that kamikaze attacks were much more, um, much more common. Uh, emperor Hirohito was the emperor of Japan. He was believed by the Japanese to have, at least in some sense, sort of uh, some aspect of divinity to him. Uh, in other words, Japan was very loyal to the emperor and really creates kind of an atmosphere where the Japanese really do fight to the death in many of these battles. They're, they're very, very reluctant to surrender opting rather to engage in a kamikaze attack, for example, than simply surrender like maybe some other theaters of the war. The U.S. general in charge in the Pacific is Douglas MacArthur. So he is the U.S. general who employs a strategy of island hopping. So this is the wartime strategy for the U.S. Right, so if we draw a really awful map of Japan. Japan looks something like this. There's an island up here and there's an island down here. And you know, throughout the Pacific Ocean, so you have Hawaii somewhere over here, but throughout the Pacific Ocean, there are all these different islands, right? And the Japanese have succeeded in taking over these islands, but you know, Tokyo and the capital city is right here. Essentially what uh, MacArthur wanted the US to do and what the US did do in terms of fighting the Japanese was rather than taking back every single Japanese possession, simply just hop the US uh, Navy and Army from island to island. And once you were close enough, 
carry out bombing missions, simply ignoring some of these other Japanese territories. So it was focusing on specific strategic islands to liberate from Japanese occupation so that you could essentially reach the heart of the Japanese mainland, which was where all the war-related supplies were being made. You know, the idea is that if you can cut off the head, then the rest will essentially, uh, you know, the rest will follow. And that's the strategy that the U.S. used. However, they experienced fierce resistance. The Battle of Iwo Jima and the Battle of Okinawa, these are battles with very high military and non-military deaths. You know, not just for American soldiers involved in attacking those islands, um, but even among the Japanese civilian population, you know, in both of these areas, both Japanese civilians and Japanese soldiers fought to the bitter end. And it really played a factor in how this war ended up, ended up sort of winding down. And that is with the dropping of an atomic bomb or an atomic weapon. So an atomic bomb is a weapon that, you know, not a physicist, so I don't know exactly how it works, but you, you know, split a uranium atom or something like that. In other words, it's a weapon the world has never seen. And this was being developed uh, by scientists in both Germany and the United States. One of these scientists, Albert Einstein, fled Germany in the 1930s. He was Jewish. He was escaping persecution, came to the United States and warned the U.S., that the Germans were attempting to create this massive sort of doomsday device. And so that prompted the United States to provide funding for the Manhattan Project. This was the scientific um, project to develop an atomic bomb. Right? It's something like, I don't know, $2 billion or whatever the money amount was go towards uh, this project to build a doomsday weapon to harness atomic energy. And the United States was successful in developing the first atomic bomb. After Germany had surrendered in 1945, the question was, you know, it, you know, should this bomb actually be used even following a successful test of it? And ultimately it was the president, Harry Truman. Roosevelt died in 1945. Uh, Harry Truman, who made the decision to use the atomic weapon. The first one was on Hir Hiroshima. This is a Japanese city. Enola Gay was the name of the airplane. Little Boy was the name of the atomic bomb. And it was the first atomic weapon used, all right, dropped by the US on Japan. Uh, killed approximately 60,000 people instantly and a number of people in the aftermath via radiation poisoning and everything else sort of ugly that those weapons use. Uh, still, the Japanese refused to surrender. A few days later, Nagasaki became the second target for atomic weapons. And following the bombing of Nagasaki, the Japanese surrendered. So the United States unleashed two of these weapons on Japan, forcing the surrender. Since then, there has been a debate about these weapons being used by the United States, specifically by Harry Truman, uh, and a lot of differing opinions as to whether or not the United States was justified in using them or not. Some will say, look at the Japanese resistance on places like I uh, Iwo Jima and Okinawa. Had there not been an atomic weapon, who knows how many American soldiers would have died? Who knows how many Japanese soldiers would have died? And who knows how many Japanese civilians would have died? That if the type of fighting was anything like what the United States experienced before, then you could expect upwards of maybe 4 million deaths total um, of a, an island that has you know, 9 million inhabitants. So, uh, and this was the, the reason Truman gave, right? The idea was that it saved more lives by using a, a weapon to show sort of a, this power than a typical invasion. Some people don't buy that. Others point to political reasons. That following, um, you know, that following German defeat, the Soviet Union declared war on Japan, and the United States not wanting the Soviets to gain any influence on Japan used 
atomic weapons to make Japan surrender solely to the U.S. so the U.S. could monopolize the post-war settlement. In other words, this was strategic. The uh, atomic weapon was dropped more so to show Stalin who was boss than it was for uh, you know ending the war quickly in Japan. Other state well, it was just the, the nature of warfare that all during World War II, there was a disregard for human life that really the world had never experienced before. All nations targeted civilians during World War II. That was fair game. And the fact that the United States had done so in just a more efficient way really doesn't differentiate it from some of the other types of um, you know, uh, missions and actions that were carried out during the conflict. So there still remains a controversy today over whether or not the United States should have used that weapon. Um, the point is they did. And after the dropping of the second atomic bomb on Nagasaki, Japan surrendered and you immediately had, almost immediately, had the post-war Cold War political showdown emerge. Uh, in conquered territories, Germany and Korea, both of these were split between the US and the Soviet Union, right? You essentially had, you know, in terms of Germany, oops, east and west, in Korea, scroll down so you can see that. North and South, right? And even in Berlin, which is the capital of Germany, even that was split in two, right? So now this East, West Germany, North, South Korea uh, shows the two opposing ideologies that will make up the Cold War.